We're in central New Jersey, and we're in the middle of what's called the Newark Rift Basin, a giant rift that formed in the Earth's continental crust about 225 million years ago and continued to about 199 million years ago. I came here to core the rock in the Newark Basin over the interval during which one of the largest mass extinctions of all time occurred at about 201.5 million years ago. I have a segment of rock core recovered from our operation here, which you can hear in the background, which is from an ancient lake bed, which because of the very even sediment accumulation records events in time very, very finely. And so this represents a few hundred years of Earth history at most and it has recorded changes in the lake environment due to climate change. And that's one of the most important aspects about this site because it's in that context that we want to understand the giant mass extinction. This extinction at 201.5 million years ago, uh, one of the largest in Earth history, was a time when dinosaurs had evolved. They had appeared on the Earth about 225 million years ago. They were diversifying, but very, very slowly. Other kinds of carnivorous and herbivorous animals were dominant on the Earth. But the extinction wiped out the dinosaurs' competitors, and we think that's why they took over the world at that point. What we seek to understand by taking this rock core is we seek to try to figure out what caused this mass extinction. Was it climate change driven by volcanic eruptions and massively increased CO2? Or was it perhaps sulfur in the atmosphere that cooled the environment instead? Or was it something even more dramatic, like an asteroid impact? Uh, we think that the clues are locked within these rock core samples that we're recovering at a rate of about 10 feet every few hours. This small segment of rock core is part of what we hope to be about several hundred feet of rock core taken from the site. And we'll be looking at uh, the concentration of platinum group elements, like platinum, for example, and iridium especially. We'll be looking for signs of ancient carbon dioxide change in little nodules that are preserved within the mud. We'll be looking for pollen and spores and we'll be looking for shifts in the Earth's magnetic field that tell us exactly when in Earth history we're getting these core samples from. The rocks of this age, part of the Triassic and Jurassic period, occur almost globally. They're abundant in many places in eastern North America, Greenland, Europe, uh, Africa, both in northern Africa, West Africa, and in southern Africa. They're present in China. Uh, and, uh, and other parts of Asia as well. They're also present in Antarctica and northern Siberia. So you could go almost anywhere in the world and within, say, a 500-mile swath find at least some of this kind of rock. The larger scale question that I'm interested in is how do climate changes and other changes on the Earth influence the history of life? whether driven internally by changes in the dynamics between the Earth's mantle and the surface, or the core in the surface, or by external events such as asteroid impacts, or climate change driven by changes in the Earth orbit. Those are the kinds of larger scale pictures that I'm ultimately interested in.